everyone. Welcome back to Sharon Cullen Art. Today I'm just going to update you on a couple things and show you what I'm doing for my plein air setup right now. Uh, I did mention it over on Instagram, so if you follow me over there, you've already seen a photo of this. But a couple things. First of all, the last time I spoke with you, I was going to be going to my surgeon for um, my finger. And... I am in this special little splint. It's nice and comfy. Well, it's not comfortable. It's sweaty and I hate it, but it's smaller than the other one I was wearing. And uh, basically I was told after I had x-rays done that I did cut right through the bone and I clipped a chunk of bone off, causing an avulsion fracture. It disconnected my tendon and they're hoping that, <clears throat> well, I had a little lump on the top of my knuckle and it was strange and that was where the bone was sitting and it belonged down here where the cut was but it was up further on my knuckle so anyway I'm in this for six to eight weeks at six weeks I can check to see if my finger will straighten if I have any control over it going like this which is what I did not have although when I had it sitting on a table at the exam when I was being examined I tried and tried and tried and concentrated. I can't even imagine what it's like to be paralyzed because just trying to tell my finger to move was impossible. And then it twitched and I think I was able to lift it. He was pushing down on this knuckle so that I couldn't use that knuckle to do any lifting. And then all of a sudden it kind of twitched and I was like, oh my gosh, I moved it and he was, He's like, well, that's a good sign. He was bummed that it had taken me so long to get in. I told him what had happened and the situation and all that. And um, so, yeah, basically six to eight weeks, I'll find out if it heals. If it is healing, then I may wear my splint a little bit longer just to give it a little more rest and then try again. He said that most people do not get 100% use back in their fingers once something like this happens <clears throat> but I told him I am a flute player I need my fingers in order to play and he said that um, they'll look into surgery afterward but I do need surgery on this thumb um, like when you look at me from the side I cannot pull my thumb back like this one I can bring this one way back here like this this one that's what it does. I cannot pull it back. And if you look, I got this huge lump here in comparison to the size of my other one. It's huge. What happened is, is my joint has broken down and my socket is gone. Um, same thing happened to my sister. It's more common in women than men. And she had a surgery done and now I need it too, where they take and drill through the joint the ball portion of the joint the socket is gone the ball portion of the joint they cut they drill a hole through they take tendon from your forearm wrap it around and then sew it to the other side so that you get your full motion back again which would be really nice but um because i'm having trouble holding a flute up too so i'll be needing that but oh no oh no Pat let the dog out. It is muddy here. We've had our first day of rain and it was 10 hours straight of rain. I will put a little clip in here of what it was like for me walking over from my home to my studio today. I was sinking in the mud and it was really bad. You can see how I was sinking in this mud. I mean, look at how deep I was sinking and it was all the way from my house like that. It's horrible. This mud is horrible, and I've got to wait at least another month for grass. And then I had to get out of my boots there, carry them in, and then I put them over here on the porch. And you can see just how muddy these are. Oh, it was bad. I cannot have him in here. I need to give him a bath. Oh, shoot, I think he saw me. He can hear me. The windows are Oh, anyway, so, 
Anyway, in the meantime, I get a message from my son's girlfriend. She says, you know, Jason's had an accident and uh, he's fine, but he cut himself with a knife. And I thought, oh, great. Here he is. Let's see how black his feet are. Well, hello there, little man. You're wanting in? Are your feet black? Yes, your feet are black. Your feet are very black. And you're going to want to come and sit on that? I don't think so. I'm going to have to pause my video to give you a bath. Oh, my goodness. Okay, there's my boots. You can see how bad it was for me coming over here. Ugh. Oh, I look at how clean you got. Yes. Your paws are white again. White as snow. But look at my vanity. Yikes. This is the carnage. <laughs> Phew, so that's done. And luckily he hasn't wanted to jump on the couch yet. I want his feet to dry first. So anyway, uh, so he's having surgery. My son is having surgery tomorrow. He cut himself with a knife right through here and he lost his flexor tendon. So he cannot do this with his thumb. He can't bend it down. So his is bad. And being a thumb, uh, they're very concerned. So he's having major surgery tomorrow. Of course, I can't be there. They only allow one person. So Monica's going to be with him, his girlfriend. And um, yeah. So anyway, also, July is World Watercolor Month. And although this is a 2019 shirt, you guys uh, who have been doing World Watercolor Month, I'm really proud of you for going for it. There's many of you who are doing it that I'm watching on Instagram, and I wish I was doing it too, but I just didn't do it in time this year. Things have been so busy and hectic around here with all of the excavating going on. I'm going to be throwing in some excavating video for you, but I also wanted to tell you about my plein air setup that I'm going to be using for right now. Um, you all know about my sketch bag that I like to use. This one, um, I always forget the guy's name, and he didn't put his name on the bag. But this one, the one that I can hold up and it becomes a tray when I'm standing. Well, for sitting, it's a little more complicated. So I decided to pull out my old oil painting plein air box which is a pochade box, if you're familiar with pochade boxes. I had this one made. Uh, it's one of several models by Alla Prima Pochade. And usually the box just ends up right here, but I had this extension put on and I'm gonna show you exactly how this works. And I have converted it over to my watercolor and gouache box. But a la prima pochade, this one I think is called the bitter root or bittersweet. What is it? Uh, I'm on too far away. I can't see my face. There we go. I have the black foot. The bitter root is the next size up, which I kind of wish I would have gotten. But these are not lightweight. These are very heavy. Um, I got the black foot. It's the 8 by 10. It's currently $359. And then you can decide which side you'd like your drawer on and which side you'd like your table on. And I wish, I kind of wish I would have put my drawer on the left-hand side because I'm a lefty and I keep my drawer open a lot. And the table is just secondary. But I still love it. So um, anyway, let me, I'm going to turn the camera around and I'm going to show you exactly how I set this thing up. Now on the bottom of the box, there's a hole here, and that is to put your tripod foot on, or tripod head on, I forget, head foot, whatever you want to call it, and then you can attach it to a tripod. You can see I've had one on there in the past, um, but I didn't want to use a tripod for this. I wanted to be able to keep it, keep it um, for my lap, for lap use, because I don't have... A lap use setup except for this basically 
uh, which is good too, this, this board that I have. And I've shown you all of that before. I have a video on that. You can go look. But anyway, this comes apart here. And this is a wet box for when you're oil painting, you need a place to put your uh, panels after they're wet. So there is this box here, but I'm using it for my... Uh, it's all magnetized. I'm using it for my um, sketchbooks. And I have fit two sketchbooks in here, an eight full eight and a half by 11 sketchbook and another full seven by 10 sketchbook. So they're both in here. But basically what this has is a setup where this has a magnet on it and you can move this over and you can put wet panels in there and then they stay separate from each other. They don't touch each other and you can adjust the size however you want it. You can have, have them this big, this big, or the other size, which I believe is a six by eight if you want it in the other one. But this is all done with magnets. It's a great little box. And if you don't use the, the um, if you have a smaller sketchbook, like a five by eight, you don't even need that extension. You can just put this on like this, and then it, this is how big the box is. It's just an eight by 10. And like I said, that's the one that I got, the Blackfoot. They also have the Bitterroot. They have the Yellowstone, which is 11 by 14. And then they have a smaller one called the Belly River, which is 6 by 8. Um, but I got the 8 by 10. So, um, anyway, let me show you how I have this set up. This opens this way, like this. And I'm, I apologize, it's so dirty because of oil paint. I can't get it off. I've tried. Now this arm comes up and down and it will squeeze your canvas or your book or whatever uh, or your watercolor block or whatever you're using. It'll squeeze it down and then this goes up and down by magnets. You can adjust it or I can pull it off completely. But I keep it down at the bottom usually, and then for me, I just put my book on it like this. Right now I have something started here, so I'll just show you what I would do. I would put it on here like this, and then I have a drawer over here. It has two clicking things that stops the drawer from pulling out. You can hear it click quick and it holds everything in place so it's not going to you're not going to lose your drawer. Then I have the table that I put on this side. And it also has little brush holders here as well. Um let me see if I can turn this a little more. There we go. So then for me, because I'm using a watercolor book and that's not what this Pashad box is really made for, I just put these on here like this to hold it so that when I'm painting, I can use just a uh, bullfrog clip to hold it against this. And it's not going anywhere now. It's, it's there for the duration. And then I, I'm ready to paint. I don't have this on straight though right now. So there we go. And also, this can be put at any level. You can lay it flat if you want, although that's kind of far away from you. Or you can raise it up. <laughs> and it's very stiff, so it's not going anywhere when you... I love the way everything is so tight because nothing will fall over on you when you're using it. Now, I like to keep it kind of at a slope about like that. Um, you can see how it's just, it's past the 90 degree mark. So, but I like it like that because it's just, just right for water coloring, I think. And then I decided to put this in the bottom of my, and this is just a, a lightweight plastic palette, uh, mixing palette. And then I just have my little small uh, thing of watercolors here that I can fit in here. And what I've been doing is putting my paper towel here and then taking my water cup, which I don't seem to have in front of me. I'll just grab one of these, excuse me. 
this one from my other little thing. I usually use a pill vial, as most of you know. Then I'll just set that in there like that, and then I am ready to paint. Over here, I have some extra paper toweling. Um, I keep an eraser, some pencils, two pencils. I always keep a mechanical in case my lead breaks on my favorite one. I have a couple of erasers. I've got my little skinny eraser and a gummy eraser, a small spray bottle, and a um, couple pens. And then I have all my travel brushes that are in here. I keep a um, small ruler, some magnetic clips, and I have these in case I wanted to put my watercolors over on this other side, which is what I was doing the other day. I just put my um, my watercolors right here on this thing, just like that. And then I was mixing here and had my paper towel and everything. And I may do it that way too, I don't know, but I may not use that at all. Um, I also have this smaller palette that I always like to take with me. And um, this one is from... Um, artadventure.com or whatever, I forget. Art Toolkit. It's from the Art Toolkit. And these are the colors that I keep in here. But I'm not really one for half pans, although I have to say I have not been having any trouble with these. I just moisten them and I'm all set to go. This has two greens in it. I don't have any greens in this palette. I mix my own. So sometimes I have them both out. But when I do that and I have them over here like this, what I've been doing is just putting them here like like that and then I have all of my colors right where I want them but uh, that's my new setup and I'm really enjoying it it's great having it sit on my lap right now I have it way out on the edge of my legs so you can see what I'm doing but I love this Peshad box and I haven't been using it because I really haven't been painting with oils and so now I'm going to go ahead and get started again painting with my watercolors with this box and with gouache. I have this um, little box that I can take with me um, that has all my Holbein colors in it. They're just little tubes that I will use this and um, or I may use this other setup that I have for my oil paints, which is... Um, when I first got this, I, I didn't want to be using the bottom of the box for my oil paints and getting it all gummed up and ruined because then it's hard to clean again. So what I did was, excuse me, I went to my local glass shop and I got a piece of glass. This is three eighths, I think, of an inch or something like that. I forget how many millimeters it is, but it's pretty thick glass, and I had the edges beveled slightly so that it didn't cut me, and then it just sets down in here. But this makes my box super heavy. It's great for mixing oil paint on, but because it's clear, it's not great for mixing watercolor on. Transparent colors, it's hard to see what your color is on this. What I'd like to do is get a small piece of white plastic to just stick in the bottom here and just have it that way. I could put white paper toweling down and then put my glass on top of it, which would work just fine, but I don't know that I want to carry all that extra weight with me, so in the meantime, oops, darn it, I just dropped all of my little pallets or little um, pans on the floor. So I'm going to have to pick those up. So in the meantime, um, I'm just going to go with this setup here. And I'm really liking it. I think uh, it'll be great for me at the beach. I can sit down on a blanket, set it in front of me, and then I can just paint. And I've been really like painting upright. I do have my Advanced Watercolor Easel by N Plein Air Pro, which is also good. But that also requires a tripod. And then you're either sitting on a stool or you're standing. And I want to be able to just sit right down on the beach or have something on my lap. And I saw another artist on YouTube doing that at the beach, painting gouache. 
I know who it was. It was Lena Riva or something like that. I forget her name. L-E-N-A Riva, something like that. Anyway, she does gouache painting, but her approach is very different. It's more of an oil painting approach rather than a watercolor approach. So um, I don't really care for her style of approach to painting, but her paintings are beautiful. And I really liked that she had a Peshad box that she was using for her gouache setup. And I thought, how genius. The other thing I did also was that I set, I grabbed a bunch of my G's Finest gouache. Um, I not only had that set of 24, but I also got the set of 60 from them. And I was using one of my home cube things, put some Kleenex in there, and then I just filled it with all the paints that I would love for um, landscape painting. Everything under the sun, way more than I need. But I can take this along with me, and then it becomes a gouache painting rather than watercolor, but I can have both. This I would just carry, and um, these would sit in my setup, so. And in fact, I don't know if my cup will sit in here or not. That would be great if it did. I think it's too tall, though. Yeah, I think it's gonna be too tall. But anyway, that's pretty much it for the Peshad setup. Oh, actually, it closed, so. I'm gonna set this down. This is what happens when he starts steamrolling. You can see it, everything bounces in our house. He's just doing the driveway to flatten it out right now. Here they're digging out for the retaining wall to the left of our walkout. They already finished the retaining wall on the right, which amazes me how fast they work. But now they're going ahead and cleaning up the area down below so that they can put those huge concrete walls up. Now he just took the bucket off of the front of the bulldozer and he is just using the hook so that he can lift the big concrete retaining walls up and put them in place. I apologize for the screen. I'm in my studio here and the sun is shining on my screen at the moment, which is making things worse. It really amazes me how meticulous Tom is with these bulldozers. All he is is pointing a little bit, uh, an inch this way, an inch that way, and he moves that thing right into place.
And now here he's just making sure it's level before they put the next black on. Later, he'll be piling the dirt up against it. And now they're finishing up on this side. This one was staggered three blocks, then two blocks, then one block high. And so they're putting the rest of those on. Next spring, Pat's going to be building some boxes that will set on top of those blocks because they have raised areas. They're not flat on top. And then there's these um, rebar handles on them that we want to disappear, so we're gonna put flower boxes on top of them. On the one side, we may be planting rose bushes staggering down like a hedge, but I'm not sure yet what we're gonna do. Now he's working alone, and he's using a skid steer instead of the bulldozer. It's amazing how he just, like fingers, he just slaps that thing up there and he's all done. Now here he's pushing the dirt up against the retaining wall to fill it in. And it's amazing to me how close he gets without bumping anything. We still have a lot of hills. Looks like brand new construction, but our retaining walls are up and they look great. We're gonna put our hot tub right over there when we get the hot tub. Gotta pour the concrete first though. Holy cow. Climb every mountain. Gotta climb this hill to get over into my yard. Ah! There is no yard, what am I talking about? Okay. Yikes. Ah, shoot. I'll knock that out. And now another day has passed and we are finishing up here on the driveway and he'll be all done. I've turned the volume way down on this. This thing is so loud and the vibration vibrates your entire body for like a quarter mile, I swear. This thing pounds the dirt and steamrolls it so that the driveway is flat. It's a lot better than it was, but there's still a couple whoop de doos in it. That was all I really wanted to show you was the plein air setup that I've decided to try. And I was gonna go out and do some plein air painting today, but it's still rainy and icky out. It's supposed to be clearing up pretty soon. So once these clouds move out, then maybe I can get out and plein air paint a little bit. If you guys are interested in a Peshad box like this, <coughs> excuse me, there's a lot of them on the market now. Uh, back when I bought this, he was like state of the art and I really enjoy his Peshad box. It is so well made. It is so heavy duty. You're not going to find another one that has the magnetics and the clicking of the of the drawer to keep it from sliding out and the way the tables are and, and all of that and the way that you can customize it just by 
letting him know exactly what you want and then you get it in the mail in a few weeks he custom he makes some custom orders so um, they're really great you can go to alaprimapushad.com here is his website and um, his pushads are very nice if you're interested in anything like that you can run them on a tripod you can sit with them on your lap you can set them on the ground you can work with them in the studio or plein air painting whatever you like to do so it is a great system great setup and I love it I just haven't used it in years because I haven't been oil painting so <coughs> I thought why not the other thing is is that when I'm using this on a tripod what I'll do is I will hook this over the top of my pashad on the front and I will clip this like this and then I can hang it and then I can set stuff in this tray here and it would just hang on the front or off the side however you want to do it um, I also would use a bungee cord and I would hang paper towel, a roll of paper towel from the bottom. But when I was oil painting, I went through a lot more paper towel than you would ever need to if you're just watercolor um, painting. Those of you doing World Watercolor Month, stick with it. I'm really proud of you guys. And remember, be courageous, paint with wild abandon, and most of all, be kind to each other and be kind to me. Quit with the nasty comments in the comment section because when I get a nasty comment, you do get blocked immediately. So I don't tolerate it. I'm just saying. Just saying. And I'll embarrass you on my next video. <laughs> anyway, have a great day, guys. God bless you. Bye-bye.